All right, we shift our attention now to other topical issues. Uh, we hear that the Inst Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 2 Command Headquarters, AIG Ahmed Ilyasu, has called on officers of his command to return to policing the communities in Lagos and Ogun State. AIG Ilyasu also said the police officers should put the past behind them in the spirit of nationhood and assiduously work to correct the negative perception about police officers and policing. In the same vein, security expert Dr. Ona Ekomo, in his paper titled NSAS Mass Action and the Governance of Internal Security in Lagos, identified that wanton destruction and looting in the aftermath of the protest was not targeted at a police agency, but based on the obvious fact that the attack was specifically on the federal government of Nigeria. Now, according to him, the hoodlums attacked the police as an observable and exploitable arm of government. We have him join us now uh, to take a look at this, uh, the psyche of the officers and the huge task of policing our community, especially with the increase, seeming increasing pace of uh, criminality Activities. at the moment. Uh, thank you very much um, for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. Okay, I'll, I'll just um, let Osage run with the first question. Okay, I, um, thanks for joining us once again. Thanks for your time. I, I want to, you know, start with uh, one of the things that was mentioned um, in that quick introduction. Uh, are we, um, do we say that there is a lack of understanding um, to the reason the NSAS protest happened. Uh, do, do the police officers understand why it happened? Well, I think, um, uh, thank you, sir, for having me and for that uh, excellent question. I think they have a good understanding. I think uh, they understand that uh, this was an input from members of the community uh, into uh, two uh, key things. One, stopping uh, the brutality of SARS that, has, that is well acknowledged now and widely accepted that uh, has been occurring and shouldn't be occurring. And then secondly, uh, improving the conditions um, of uh, service of Nigeria police personnel, uh, among other things, if you go with the five for five uh, formula. So I think um, they understood that it was really in their interest. And, um, and we saw a lot of uh, examples, uh, a lot of stories around the, uh, uh, particularly in the southern parts of the country where it was very hot. We saw a lot of instances where police people were guarding uh, the NSAS people and all that. But that's the normal, that's the, the good protest. That's the regular protest because there's a difference here. We had a protest and we had a riot that the Harayat was the one that was performed by the hoodlums. The protest was done by those youths uh, who organized, cleaned up behind themselves, cooked, uh, and did all the civil things and made demands on the government, but wanted to be heard. So they were disruptive. That is, they blocked uh, the toll gate and they blocked some roads and stuff. But when the um, protest persisted for a long time, the hoodlums now uh, cashed in on it and uh, you know uh, found it as an opportunity to mix uh, make quick cash uh, make uh, uh, and then uh, uh, ply their trade which is criminality and um, and that's what you saw with the burnings and killings and lootings and what have you uh, okay let's look at this. those police stations so the police people they do get it they they you know they, they understand okay. okay let's look at the um, should we say uh, the urging of the AIG asking officers to please go back to their duty post while, you know, showing empathy. We just talked about that earlier uh, to the concerns that they have about their safety while they're trying to save others about being demoralized. You know, on, on the flip side of it, you, you look at the um, protest, the, the reason for the protest was not just to end police brutality, but also uplift uh, the police officers' welfare so that they can be better. These two narrative, um, is there a way the police authorities are working to 
ensure that officers understand this and get them back to work. That was the uh, purpose of the uh, workshop by the AIG at its location, which I spoke at. Uh, the AIG, in fact, the caption of the workshop was motivational workshop for police officers because um, uh, understandably so, well, first they lost a lot of colleagues, uh, like um, they lost uh, uh, over 20 police uh, personnel. They lost 205 police facilities, that is uh, police stations and all. And uh, some of these uh, losses were documented on a uh, video and we could see the bestiality uh, the, uh, which the, the uh, hoodlums um, uh, exhibited in a killing of uh, some of these police personnel. Uh, in Anambra State, a police uh, personnel, in fact, I, I think a DPO was decapitated, you know, and uh, so, I mean, this is uh, really crazy stuff uh, here. This is Boko Haram stuff. That's the territory we are in, which is really deep. Uh, now, we know, we know, and I, I can tell you, I mean, being an expert and uh, having all the facts at my disposal, we know that this wasn't perpetrated by the protesters, the youthful protesters. The, the guys we saw at uh, the Lekito Gate, uh, the ones who were fired upon by uh, the military on uh, that 20th of uh, October, we know that those uh, th those killings that we saw subsequent, that is what started happening well, actually, there had been violence prior to even the 20th. I, I, we must acknowledge that because this thing started 11th October. There had been violence. At those states, uh, we had the breakout, uh, break into the two correctional institutions. Well, it, the, some people say it was a breakout because the prisoners alleged that they were let okay. go, uh, that nobody actually broke. But I actually saw it of people jumping into the <laughs> facility. So what I'm trying to say is the, the violence had been showing its fingerprint or its signature. But unfortunately, the authorities did not recognize this and take due action uh, to nip it in the bud, okay. such that uh, it wouldn't come down to what we saw subsequently. Um, right, don't, don't. Uh, sorry to okay, in interrupt, Osage. I, I was actually looking at you to speak on the, you know, the motivational workshop you talked about. How effective um, is it in, you know, boosting? the morale of officers, and is this being replicated across the states that were affected by the protests? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, on that day, um, or that Tuesday, that's uh, like uh, two, three days ago, um, the, a lot of the officers came to me after the <laughs> lengthy lectures. Uh, the IG, AIG spoke, and I spoke also at length. Um, and uh, they were very uh, complimentary. And they said they, they begin to understand now that the society actually values them, uh, that the society appreciates the work that they are doing, and uh, that the society, in fact, needs them. Because I gave them the, uh, the essence of policing, the reason that we have policing in the first place. You know, sometimes, unless crises like this occur, there is no opportunity to really reflect upon what we are doing and why we are doing it. And uh, so that was what we what we uh, went out to do that day. I uh, went out and let them know that uh, they are a very crucial piece of the societal puzzle that we're trying to solve. And that, in fact, without policing, that was a refrain. I made them repeat several times. I said, without policing or without security, nothing works. And in fact, nothing works. Because I'm sure you, you remember in the midst of this crisis, many of you, many of us, including myself, we couldn't get to work. Um, uh, we couldn't do the normal things we had to do. And then we were under attack by hoodlums, armed hoodlums, uh, unfortunately. So these are the kinds of things. So I think it was, okay. was very effective. A lot of feedback from participants was that, uh, you know, they, they were going to go back and embrace uh, their uh, families again and let them know that this is a, an important job and that they are, in fact, like I told them, I say, you are doing God's work on earth. You know, uh, keeping people safe. We call that doing God's work because that is the number one job that God does for us, keeps us safe. And so okay. they were very uh, pleased uh, with Dr. that Michael, narrative. Let me, let me and jump I think in here. They, uh, I think it's beginning to work. Um, beyond that, I've heard from other people, uh, police uh, executives, who have mentioned that... Um, Okay, um, let me quickly step in here. I, I want to ask now, um, earlier on the program, we spoke about... 
uh, the narrative of the Nigerian police uh, of officers keeping malice with citizens, and that's maybe the reason they've decided to uh, stay away from work. Uh, I, I want to know if there is some level of discomfort with uh, Nigerian police officers, if they've seen that their working conditions are not favorable, if they've seen that they are not also being treated fairly, how can they express their, uh, their feelings? Is there, is there ways that they can make this known to the authorities? Um, I'm not expecting police officers to go on strike, but is there any other way that police officers can demand better working conditions? Uh, yes, certainly. There are other ways. Uh, first of all, you know the police, they don't have unions, so they cannot, uh, like you said, you don't expect them to go on strike. They don't even have a union to articulate their demands. Um, and so the only strength, well, I, I did a stakeholder analysis in my paper that day, and I told them that they needed to look at some stakeholders who would be able to lobby in their behalf. Because really, what you need from the political executive uh, is to not police now, political, that is from the political elite, the leaders, is to have them understand what your needs are so that they will provide those needs for you to do what you're doing. Now, we know that policing in this country is uh, is almost like a, a suicide adventure. You know, they are not well paid, they are not well equipped. Um, I talked about the uh, the attack uh, in uh, Aja, where, uh, in, fact, in fact, around the country, in fact, the police may even uh, uh, they acknowledge that in most places they don't have uh, tear gas to use on protesters. So, I mean, they are, so I'm talking about equipment. They are not well equipped and so on and so forth. And then certainly in the ca case of remuneration, they are well, not well remunerated. And then even going with the theme of uh, today, World Kindness Day, they are not, they are not uh, well, uh, they are not giving good kindness to put it that way. But I will say that I think um, um, we, I did a stakeholder analysis back to the paper where I talked about uh, using various levers of pressure to get the political elite to do the needful, that is to equip uh, police personnel, remunerate them properly, lead them well, and uh, set proper goals for them. Well, what about strategic policing? Well, there's something called strategic policing. There is Proper policy. In fact, there's what we call, I, I reference it in my paper, there's epistemology of policing. You know, so what is what is going on here? Why is it that we are not doing robust thinking? Uh, uh, you, we, we, I mean, we are just doing very lazy thinking, as it were, when it comes to an institution as basic and as important as the police agency in this country. Because again, like I said in that lecture, without policing or without security, nothing works. So, but anyway, uh, so I now looked at various stakeholders to answer your question. I, I said the community they served. That's a very effective, that's a, a, a group that must speak up for them and speak out for them all the time. I also identified you guys. The media, I said the media must bring its power to be here because the government is very concerned about its image. So the government does listen to the media. Uh, you know, I know you guys have a lot of run-ins with the government, but they listen to you guys a lot. They, if, in fact, uh, let me give you an example. If a minister wants to give a, a paper or an important policy pronouncement, if they don't see the TV cameras, they will not start. They will say, no, uh, we can't start here. They will wait for the media to come in before, just to tell you how powerful you are. So I said the media. Then I said the professional associations like mine, uh, Association of Industrial Security and uh, Safety Operations of Nigeria. I said that because we have we have the reservoir of knowledge, we can begin to form powerful teams, powerful strategies that will enable the police agency achieve its mission of uh, crime control. All right, and, let, let, uh, me, let me interject and ask you this question. Right off the report um, about that um, motivational workshop, you are quoted as reminding stakeholders it should be noted that politicians will not give the police what it deserves, but what it lobbies for. You also said that the community holds the key to effectively speaking out uh, for the police. I want you to expunge on this um, in about a minute, if you can. Thank you, Ma. Now, the, what, what happened with the NSAS protest was the community, that's an example of the community speaking out for the police. I'm not talking about the riot, the violence, that's the hoodlums. Who loves those speak for anybody? They only speak for their stomach. 
But the youths who were at uh, Lucky Toolgate and around this country, they were speaking out for the police. They were saying, one answers that they wanted the police. There was there's a unit. I mean, SARS is a very tiny uh, unit in the police agency. Let me tell you, it's just that it's an investigative agency, and they became so notorious that their name was known all over. I mean, otherwise, you shouldn't really hear of it. But they said answers stop their brutality, so that was well established. But they now said improve policing and improve policing uh, conditions of service, and so that's a, an example of the community speaking out for the police. But aside from that, you have PCROC. Yeah, police community relations community, uh, committees around this country. And even in that, my lecture, we had uh, the chairman from Ogun State and uh, the chairman from Lagos and the chairman from VI who were in attendance. And what we, uh, what uh, these are groups, um, as uh, citizen, citizen groups that uh, interface with the police on a, um, on a constant basis and then the uh, you know, they uh, share different uh, ideas and share needs for services and then also lobby uh, government officials in behalf of the police agency. Okay. Uh, I think uh, that's most of the time that we have um, on this conversation, uh, Dr. Um, Onna Ekomi. Thank you so much for um, sharing your time with us and, of course, uh, this very interesting conversation. We hope to see our police officers back on the streets uh, in high spirits also. Um, but also very important is we hope to also see better uh, equipping of our police officers. We want to see that uh, the NSARS protests and the conversations that we're having did create a change you know, in, in, in what our policing system truly is. Because if we go back to normal, then it, it's of no use. So thank you once again for, for sharing your thoughts with us. Well, in spite of the network, we were able to hear him speak. We apologize for the cracks uh, during the conversation. Um, sometimes it's, uh, I mean, we, t we talked about broadband yesterday, broadband penetration, penetration yesterday. Yes. It doesn't seem to be have penetrated well for <laughs> us this morning uh, to give us a it's better... It's not about how far it goes, it's how <laughs> it's well, how it, well really goes, it really is. The quality of the penetration. Um, uh, if not, the time was really short. I had some really um, serious questions uh, for... Um, this year, Dr. Ona, uh, the, the AIG talked about um, uh, the need for police officers to change their attitude to duty as well. Yes, it is important that we talk about their welfare, but it's also important that they improve on their relationship with civilians because that way, when I feel... To be honest, it, it takes a lot of courage sometimes to approach an officer and say, um, I need your help. And then I saw stories even yesterday of a lady recounting the response she got when she approached an um, officer after she was robbed somewhere here um, in Lagos. You know, so it, I, I wanted to get his perspective on it. You know, it is important, really, that because our officers need to but if refine they, if they don't, the way they relate with civilians. So, aside the the narrative that you know the Nigerian police force itself, you know, right from its foundation, has never been set up, and it's a, it's a narrative I've heard. Um, it's never been really set up to serve, and that's why it's called a force. Um, aside yeah. that perspective, there is also the part where if they don't feel right. They really cannot give what they don't have. If they, right from their training, right from their barracks, right from you know the, the things that they go through before they become you know police officers, um, if if they don't have the empathy that is needed in in you know in the the foundation of that job, they can't give it to you. They are poorly trained. They are poorly paid. They are poorly treated. And so when they go out in the streets with that. anger, with anger, with all that frustration, that's what they pour out to citizens. And we also obviously haven't found ourselves having a system where we can checkmate these things. And that's what the NSAS protests, I believe, we're fighting for. Give us a system where police brutality can be checkmated. Yes, but and then when the they time, know that there is punishment. And then yes. there's another video of an, an army officer that actually went viral, uh, pulling somebody, beating somebody. I watched that video. It was a hard watch, to be honest. Yes, yeah, it was a hard watch for me, even in the face of all of these. Um, I, I wanted to speak quickly on the comment you made about the police force as an entity. There was a period, actually, 
enjoyed not saying the Nigerian police force. When I read the news, uh, I'd rather say <laughs> the Nigerian police. Even now, sometimes I omit adding the force because there was a time there was a movement to remove the force from, uh, to make it, let it be Nigerian police. That's all we need to know. There is exactly. no force involved. You are, first of providing service to the people. Um, let's hope that they remove it and remove every other thing that goes with Turn force when it comes like to dealing with a, Nigerian LAPD citizens. Hello. <laughs> hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.